Welcome to Weld.com. Bob and Man Cub here. Man Cub, you're building a, a project here, a, a highfalutin, good looking stainless yep. barrier handrail type application. Yeah, it's 316 stainless. It's going to go up on a second uh, level of a house. Okay. Looking, looking out over the Gulf Ocean. So he wanted uh, to run 316 uh, stainless, uh, eighth inch aircraft cable with oh. stainless steel turnbuckles. That'll look nice. Most houses got the fences where you can't see out. So since he's got the beautiful view of the Gulf, he wants to uh, basically look out in the Gulf of the Ocean just looking through instead of standing up and looking and just I've sitting down. I've seen some work and it, when it's finished, it looks really nice. So this is 316 stainless. And what happens, this is this an experiment? Yeah, we, we I uh, wasn't sure if I wanted the top ooh, cable or yeah top cable. It was it looked bad when we got it up. Like we basically built one little section first, and got it up, and ran a little eighth inch stainless steel wire through here, okay. and we didn't like it. So we were okay. like, okay, we're gonna just gonna weld this hole up, and uh, and then carry on with our business. Okay. So the problem is, we got to fix a hole in stainless. Yeah. All right. So I know this is three sixteen, so I need three sixteen uh, flutter wire right here. And when you, I like to use gas lens on stainless. We'll be running like, uh, what is this, a number 10 cup or 12 cup? I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, number 10 cup. I'm just running Argon on an Everlast uh, 200. I'm gonna run about between 145 and 150, 150 amps. Okay. What are we gonna do about the bottom of the hole? We could do it a couple different ways. Uh, I'm gonna do, the way I'm gonna do it, either you could get a piece of aluminum or brass, I'm gonna put it in here like this one you're holding in your hand. Okay. I'm gonna just put it in there, clamp it, then we're just going ahead and weld it up. Because we don't, we're, I mean, this is not critical. We're not trying to get way down in the bottom of the hole and Correct. do it's all that kind of stuff. And we're not putting the hole back. And you're going to come back and do some kind of a finish. Yes. So essentially when we build this up, you're going to lick that off there and then flush this. And then you're doing a pattern. Is that what Yeah, I'm just doing a little pattern here on top. Then okay. Then I basically uh, take this up to uh, 2,000 grit. Then I hit it with uh, a wool pad on a control speed uh, big grinder. So you're, so you're gonna get a mirror finish on this? Yeah. Wow, that's gonna look really nice. Yep. All right, so so if we had foil, I know who uses that foil. I know. That Rush Cane, that Cane Kid guy, he does the purge caps. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so we're ready to go. Yep. I'm just going All right, to well, let's, get, let's get some gear on and, and uh, you can teach me how to do this. <laughs> You've probably done it multiple times, Bob. <laughs> Actually, I fixed a lot of holes in beams and stuff over the years. Where I put a piece of brass on the back side of it, like, a, like I'm doing a bolt hole pattern of four bolts across the flanges. I stick a piece of brass on the back side and blaze through it. So it's usually because somebody laid it out and missed center on the bolt pattern is all it is. So. Again, you know, I, I've filled some holes in my day, but I haven't done stainless in quite some time. This is non-critical, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we're just more cosmetic than anything yeah, else. Yeah, we're not, no pressure or no... Well, or here's the deal. I kind of want to get in there, but I fear of dipping my tungsten and fouling my tungsten. So, two things. If this was a critical hole, what would we do? Uh, we'd come in here and chamfer this thing back. We'd, but, yeah. We'd do something so we can get down to the bottom of it. Yeah. We just got a backer on here. And I have cut about eight pieces of a piece of filler wire off, about eighth of an inch long or less, and just put them down in there. See, that's a good trick. I've never seen that before. Well, For sure. again, I want, you know, I don't want to stab this in there, foul my tungsten. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to start my arc out here, because you're going to finish this anyway. I want to start my arc and then get this over here and kind of melt those in, make them jump into the walls of the hole down deep. And then as I come back out, I can drip this in there and then we can finish it off. Beautiful. Give that a try. Let's do it. Uh, that's coming out nice. It's burning in there. No, one of them jumped over here and fouled my tungsten. Yeah, but again, you said it's not a uh, critical weld, so it's going to be all right. So I'm going to go ahead and push wire.
No, it kind of worked, but as those melted, they all kind of they kind of jumped. Yeah, it jumped and a little it, bit. It barely got into my tungsten, but I wasn't worried about it. What do you see on the back side? Can't really see much, but you're, you're, it came through. A lot of it came through. Okay. Again, non-critical, but we've got you know you got some finish work to do, and uh, you're up above the surface enough. You yeah. could go in there and finish that off. Okay. Perfect. So, you know, we had the backer in there and we put some filler wire down in there, but it did it did kind of melt and jump over to one side, but at least it got us started. Yeah. And then when we got things melted together, we were able to fill that in and push some wire in there. Yeah. Brought it up to the top so you can finish it off. Little trick, little trick there. Hope you found that little uh, trick educational and you could use that sometime there's all there's a bunch of little techniques about filling holes some people do it all the time I used to do a lot of mine in beam work big stuff where somebody do a oh we'd burn an inch or something and forget lay out the bolt hole pattern wrong. I always clamped a piece of brass on the back side did a spray weld or hot flux core or something down in there and pop that off and you could dress it real quick and go back and drill your holes correctly gotcha Thanks for watching Weld.com. We really appreciate your subscri and subscription. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. So I know you guys want to see the final product. So I'm going to take the 40 grit Ferg flap disc. I'm going to just flat, to uh, flat top this right off. And then I'm going to just put a final finish on this and then I'm good to go. There we go. Didn't take too much off or nothing. So we're still good. We're nice and flat. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Appreciate it. Say it again. Ferg. Ferg. Like Ferg. 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 I want to say Ferg. 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 Oh, God, you're messing with me on this camera. <laughs> Dang it. Let's all get Action. stupid.